some of you very kindly sent in some questions over YouTube and we've um, selected a few and we've pre-recorded our answers because we wanted to actually edit in some clips and it was the easiest way for us to do that so you get to see some little glimpses of uh, the desolation of Schmaug. So let's have a look at Good. your questions. Thank you. Hey Peter, Chris here. Hope all is well. Um, I've heard it often said by you and the writers that the most difficult chapter in the Lord of the Rings trilogy to craft as a story was The Two Towers. And that totally makes sense. Being the middle chapter, it has no definitive beginning and it certainly doesn't have a conclusive ending. Um, so I guess my question to you is, how has the process now been um, going from two films for The Hobbit to three films and finding the emotional arc for this middle chapter, The Desolation of Smaug? Thanks. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you're right. I mean, it it is complicated to do a middle film. Um, but the advantage is, is that we have multiple storylines. The first of the Hobbit movies is a fairly linear film. Uh, you know, Gandalf leads the dwarves across Middle-earth um, at the beginning of this adventure. The great thing about the second movie, as it was with The Two Towers, actually, is that the story starts splitting into multiple storylines and we can follow different characters as the... So the story intensifies and the stakes go up. We actually have a, another question, another video question for Peter. So uh, should we have a look and see who it is? Peter Jackson, Stephen Colbert, got a question for you about the Elves of Mirkwood, or as it used to be called, Greenwood the Great. Now, here's, uh, here's Mirkwood up here. I want to know whether you're making a differentiation between Thranduil and Legolas, who are Sindar. And the elves who live in Mirkwood, their subjects, who are Avari or Nandor or a mixture of Avari, Nandor, and Sindar. But they're, they're lesser elves than Thranduil and Legolas in the Tolkien mythos. Are you showing that differentiation that these elves are members of the Avari who did not heed the call around the shores of Lake Quivenin when Arome came and called them to Valinor? Are you taking that into consideration? Thank you. Yes. The answer to your question, Stephen, is yes. But I actually have a question for you, Stephen Colbert. Now, you were very kind to invite me onto your show last year, and anyone that appears on the show... Jabez, would you mind just handing me your mug? You know the Colbert one? Could I just borrow that for a second? Anyone that appears on the Colbert Report show gets... A free mug, which is nice, but it is quite small. And when I was sitting at the table being interviewed, there was a much bigger mug sitting there. And so I just happened to walk out with the largest size mug. I don't quite know how it happened, but this is the one that was on the table. This is the one that your guests drink out of on air. Now, can, can you see the difference? That basically the one that you give away for free has got dishwasher proof ink on it. The white ink stays. The one that your guests drink out of, we've had this through the dishwasher maybe once or twice, and it just washed away. So my question for you, Stephen, is that the mug that the guests drink out of, do you ever clean it? Do you ever worry about spreading germs? Hmm. Yeah, when Peter steals something, he likes it to be of a certain quality. Well, I didn't yeah. steal it, Jabez. I mean, I just happened to find it in my hand when I walked out <laughs> of the building onto the street. I didn't know how that happened. But it is, I mean, apart from that, it does actually... It, does taste quite nice, the tea. Right, even if it happens to be second-hand, perhaps. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we do have another uh, special guest, um, another surprise guest video. Um, so I think we should probably have a look at that, see who it is. Hello, I'm Billy Boyd. I played Peregrine Took, or Pippin, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So um, I'd like an answer to a question. And that question is, in the Fellowship, we went as far as the Misty Mountains in Middle-earth, but here in The Hobbit you go further east. Will we be seeing any new wild lands in the next Hobbit film? That's a very good question, Billy. Very good. Actually, Billy, if you remember in The Fellowship of the Ring, and you should remember, it was only ten years ago, um, you guys went through the Misty Mountains, you went through the Mines of Moria, you came out, and then The Fellowship headed south straight away, down the valley, to Lothlorien, and then, then you took the Anduin River down to Amon Hen. And so you actually managed very cleverly to, to bypass the borders of Mirkwood entirely, which was probably a good thing. I can show you a bit of artwork. Um, I just pulled out a couple of pieces to give everyone a glimpse of what Mirkwood is 
going to look like in the movie. So what we've designed, um, and actually Gus Hunter did this art, is that, you know, it's tiny dwarves in this great big looming creepy forest. I wanted to try to give it a sense of foreboding and um, grandeur. And it used to be Greenwood the Great, but it has become sick and diseased uh, with this. The Fortress of Dolgaldore is like spreading evil through the forest. And this is another um, view. You, there's dwarves there and there's a broken bridge and they have to figure out a way to cross um, the stream in Mirkwood. So yeah. I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting environment. Mm -hmm. One of the scarier parts of the yeah, story, indeed. Hey, so Jed, thank you very much for no, thank you, Peter, for being and helping me get through this. You're welcome, Jabez. Thank you. And I uh, wanted to thank the fans and, of course, Peter for taking your time out of your busy schedule editing the film to be with us. Great.